In this video, I want to introduce the quantum circuit model of quantum computation. In this model, at the beginning of a computation, all of the qubits are in some well-defined state, usually the state zero. The state of the qubits remains unchanged until they pass through a quantum gate. And quantum gate usually acts on one or two qubits and it changes their state in a controlled manner. And this makes quantum computing easier in many ways than normal quantum mechanics, because in normal quantum mechanics, the state vector of a quantum system evolves under the influence of some Hamiltonian according to the Schrodinger equation. And if we want to find the state of that quantum system for future times, we have to solve the Schrodinger equation. In the quantum circuit model of quantum computation, we don't have to do this. We know what state our qubits are in at the beginning of the computation. And if we want to find what state they'll be in at the end of our computation, we just have to trace through what each quantum gate that is acting on the qubits does to them. And this is usually much easier than actually solving the Schrodinger equation. Let's take a look at some specific quantum gates to get a better handle of this model. One of the simplest gates is the not gate. It acts on a single qubit and it turns the state zero into the state one and the state one into the state zero. This is why it's called a not gate. It's usually represented either as um, these crosshairs, or is just an X for the poly X operator. I should point out that quantum gates are modeled by linear transformations. So knowing what the not gate does to the state zero and the state one tells us what it does to all other states as well. Now quantum gates are actually more specific than just linear transformations they are unitary transformations. And among other things, a unitary transformation has an inverse, which means that all of these quantum gates are reversible. If we know what state the qubit is in after going through the quantum gate, we can figure out what state it was in before it went through the quantum gate. And this is just part of quantum mechanics. It says these operations always have to be reversible in this way. In addition to this, unitary transformations preserve the inner product. So if the inner product of the state of a qubit with itself is one before going through a quantum gate, which it has to be, then that inner product will also be one after passing through the quantum gate, which makes sense because that state is still representing a qubit, so it still has to be normalized. So because a quantum gate is a linear operator, we can represent it as a matrix. And specifically, the not gate would be represented by this matrix, where again, the first column is the vector that the basis vector zero is transformed into after passing through this gate. And the second column is the vector that the basis vector one is transformed into after passing through this gate. A simple quantum circuit that applies a not gate to a single qubit and then makes a measurement on the qubit would look like this. So we start with the qubit in the state zero, it goes through a not gate, and then we make a measurement on that qubit. And I'm gonna denote measurement with a box that looks like this. So this measurement is guaranteed to find the qubit in the state one because the qubit started in the state zero, the not gate turned it into the state one, and then we made a measurement. And since the amplitude of the state one is one, the probability of measuring the qubit to be in the state one is also one. Now I wanna look at possibly the most popular gate in quantum computing, and that is the Hadamard gate. The Hadamard gate creates superpositions from the basis vectors zero and one. Specifically, it turns the zero vector into the uniform superposition, which is one over root two, zero plus one. And it turns the one vector 
into something similar, which is one over root two, zero, minus one. And the Hadamard gate is represented by an H. So the matrix corresponding to this gate looks like this. One interesting property of the Hadamard gate is that it's its own inverse. So if you have a qubit and you apply the Hadamard gate twice to that qubit, you don't change its state at all. So let's look at a qubit that's in an arbitrary state. So some arbitrary superposition of the basis states zero and one. After applying a single Hadamard gate, the basis vector zero is going to be transformed into one over root two, zero plus one. And the basis vector one is going to be transformed into one over root two, zero minus one. And we want to rearrange this so we can again see clearly what the coefficients are in front of the basis vectors zero and one in this new superposition we've created. And if we apply a Hadamard gate a second time, then we again transform the basis vector zero into the vector one over root two, zero plus one, and the basis vector one into one over root two, zero minus one. And if we again just put together the coefficients on front of the basis vectors zero and one, we see that we get our original state back, a zero plus b one. So applying a Hadamard gate a second time effectively undoes what the first Hadamard gate had done. Let's look at some simple quantum circuits involving the Hadamard gate. So if we apply just one Hadamard gate, it would look like this. We have our qubit initially in the state zero. We pass it through a Hadamard gate and then we make a measurement. So as we pointed out, this will create the uniform superposition. So we'll have an equal probability of finding the qubit to be in the state zero and the state one. So both probabilities will be 0.5. Now a quantum circuit where we apply the Hadamard gate twice would look like this. Again, we start with a qubit in the state zero, pass it through two Hadamard gates, and make a measurement. And because the Hadamard gate is its own inverse, applying two Hadamard gates effectively does nothing. So when we make the measurement, the qubit is guaranteed to be in the state zero. So the probability of measuring the qubit to be in the state zero is one. Let's look at what happens when we apply a not gate prior to applying the two Hadamard gates. So the qubit is initially in the state zero. After passing through the not gate, it is in the state one. And then the two Hadamard gates effectively do nothing. So when we make the measurement, the qubit will be in the state one. The probability of measuring the qubit to be in the state one is one. Now what happens if we add a third Hadamard gate? So we start with the qubit in the state zero, pass it through a not gate, turning it into the state one, and then pass it through three Hadamard gates. So we can essentially just remove the first two because they're going to return the qubit to the state one. So this is the same thing as only having a single Hadamard gate. And applying a Hadamard gate to a qubit in the state one puts it into the state one over root two, zero, minus one. So again, the qubit will have equal probability of being in the states zero and one. So the probability of being in either of these states is 0.5. Now let's look at some more complicated circuits. Let's say we have a Hadamard gate followed by a NOT gate followed by a second Hadamard gate, followed by measurement. So even though we have two Hadamard gates, it's not clear that when we make a measurement, we're guaranteed to find the qubit in the state zero. So let's walk through the circuit step by step and see what we'll actually get. So after applying the first Hadamard gate, the qubit will be in a uniform superposition. After applying the NOT gate, we turn the zero into a one and the one into a zero. 
but this turns out to still be a uniform superposition. So in this case, applying the not gate didn't do anything. If you apply a not gate to a uniform superposition, you still have a uniform superposition. So applying the second Hadamard gate is going to undo the first one, and the qubit will be back in the state zero. So when we make the measurement, we're guaranteed to find the qubit to be in the state zero. What happens if we first apply the not gate and then run the same circuit that we just analyzed? In this case, are we guaranteed to find the qubit to be in the state one? So the first not gate is going to send the qubit into the state one. Then the first Hadamard gate will put it into one over root two, zero minus one. Applying the second not gate will reverse the zero and the one. And then applying the last Hadamard gate will turn the zero into one over root two, zero plus one, and the one into one over root two, zero minus one. And then result is that the qubit will be in the state negative one. And the square of this amplitude is one, negative one squared is one. So we're guaranteed to find the qubit to be in the state one when we make our measurement. So these two gates act on a single qubit. I now want to look at a gate that acts on two qubits. It's called the controlled knot gate, and it's usually represented like this. So we have the same crosshairs that are sometimes used to represent the knot gate, and then we just have a little dot. The dot represents the control bit. So when the control bit is zero, the controlled knot gate doesn't do anything to either of the two qubits. But when the control qubit is in the state one, the effect on the other qubit is as if we had applied a not gate to it. And the control qubit remains unchanged. So the state zero, zero, where this first one is the control qubit, is transformed into the state zero, zero. The state zero, one is transformed into the state zero, one. Both of these first two examples had the control qubit in the state zero, so the state remains unchanged. The state one zero, so in this case, the control qubit is on, so the second qubit is going to be knotted, so that gets transformed into the state one one. And finally, the state one one is transformed into the state one zero. Again, since the control qubit is one, the other qubit is knotted. So this transformation can be represented by this matrix. Let's look at some circuits that use the controlled not gate. So these will all have to involve two qubits. So let's say we have uh, two qubits, both starting off in the state zero. We knot the second qubit, and then we apply a control knot where the second qubit is the control qubit. So because the control qubit is a one, then the first qubit is going to be knotted. So the result is that both qubits will be in the state one when we make a measurement. So we're guaranteed to find the system in the state one, one. Let's look at a more interesting circuit where instead of knotting the control qubit, we apply a Hadamard gate to it. So again, the second qubit is going to serve as the control qubit, but before applying the controlled knot, we're going to pass it through a Hadamard gate and then make our measurements after the controlled knot gate. So after the control qubit goes through the Hadamard gate, it'll be in the uniform superposition. So as a whole, the system is in the state one over root two, zero, zero plus one, zero. And then after passing this through the controlled knot, the zero, zero state is unchanged because in that state, the control qubit is a zero but the one zero state is transformed into the state one one. Because the control qubit is a one, the first qubit will be flipped. So the end result is that these two qubits are in the state one over root two, zero zero plus one one. So half the time we'll find the system to be in the state zero zero and half the time we'll find the system to be in the state one one. Note that it's impossible for our two qubits to be in different states when we make our measurement. Either they're both zeros or they're both ones.